and welcome to the channel Budget Audio Review and Upgrades. Today I'm reviewing, talking about this Akai 4000 dB reel to reel recorder. Uh, something I didn't really know a lot about, I'm kind of still learning about it as it go along, but I thought this may help some real beginners, because I was a real beginner to start off with, and I had to go and search around and try and find out a few things, etc. Uh, you know, and I know a little bit about repairing, I'm no expert at all, now how to clean the heads and that, so I've got a video at the top here, which is just coming up now, which shows me greasing this and uh, cleaning the edge etc bringing it up to what it you know you know to where it is now so to speak i wouldn't say it's in 100 perfect condition at the moment because i don't think it is but it's brought it up a lot to when i first got it because when i first got this it was really muffled and the sound wasn't all that good at all and I was, I, was, I was really disappointed i think rather than rather you know just a little bit disappointed considering i only paid 50 pound for this now this is something i bought local to me um he did have it up for one two five and uh, these go on eBay for around that price, about 125, maybe 150 pound, uh, if you're gonna get it posted. If you're gonna pick up locally, you probably pick up one for about 100, 120 quid, something like that. But uh, edit up there, said it needs a service, etc. And it for 125, I went back with 110. And uh, he said, yeah, I'll accept 110. Then I had second thoughts. I watched a few videos online, especially Tecmo, and they're saying that these can be a money pit, you know, a lot involved, buying the tape and all that, even though this is only seven inch reels still expensive to get a brand new tape, etc. And if you want the flash reels, the silver ones, they start mounting up. And I didn't know about all the parts. I mean, some of these parts are quite expensive second hand to buy inside uh, or new, you may have to buy them new, etc. And you know, some of these you want to buy new rather than second hand. And uh, this kind of, I think it's called a pinch roller down. This is about 80 pounds brand new to buy. So I thought, oh, it's gonna start mounting up. Something I know really not a lot about. So I went back to the bloke and I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave it, thanks anyway. And he comes straight back and said, well, look, this is, no, this is, we don't want someone else. They've passed away. I've got so much stuff in there. It's cluttering the house. Just come around and give me 50 quid. It's yours. So no, obviously I couldn't, couldn't say no to that. So I went straight around and picked it up. Okay, I've got it home. I had no reels of it. So the first thing I had to go is get two reels. I need a, you know, a reel with tape in and I need a reel to you know, collect that tape, so to speak, the take up spool. So um, lucky enough, I went to a charity shop and they had a brand new tape in there, which is a complete fluke, really, an EMI tape here that's on there for three quid. So I thought, that's handy. I've got a brand new tape here for three quid, but I still need a reel. Anyway, I went on eBay and built, bought a few second-hand tapes, and this is where it's going to lead up to maybe another little discussion maybe about buying second-hand tapes as well. But anyway, let's go through it. So if I just stop it a minute. I cleaned it all up inside. Not that it really needed a lot of cleaning inside. It was actually inside, inside. It's just all the bits where the tape go round and bit of grease here and there so if I just flick it is a picture of the cotton buds I use this is just a few of them it was more slung a load away that was just cleaning up all the pinch rollers all the bits with a tape transport bit and that's so it's really dirty in there like you and me it was really dirty because uh, when I finally got all the tapes and everything I've done my first play on it you know recording and play it didn't come out all that good at all but after that clean it's come out quite acceptable now I think I will give you a little demo of that in a minute with a track how it's playing now but the first thing I, you know, I say, I go and get the reels, etc. And I didn't have a clue. I had no idea because first of all, I just stuck this reel. I mean, if, you, if you're you know, new to it as I was, uh, I just stuck this reel. I just pushed it on there like that, and I thought that was it. And I thought well, this is a bit wobbly. Uh, obviously, all right laying down. I thought, um, but standing up, the reel was kind of like moving out a bit. I thought, oh, what's happening here? So I've had to go online and find out that uh, you have to kind of pull on this particular model. You kind of pull this out, and it spins around and clamps it in position. And you can get some nice little clamps even go on top of that that people do on their 3D printer, etc. But that's another £35 into the mix. So things start adding up if you want to try and make this look nice. If you want the silver rims, the aluminium, you know, things, um, spools, they're £30 each. So things can start mounting up on this. I needed to do a few little repairs inside because when I first got it, it wasn't play, it weren't playing, you know, got a grip on the play. One of the springs had like got quite loose inside, so I had to replace one of the springs. Well, actually, I doubled up, I put two, I had another spring and put it next to it. So now when this, you know, if I do a forward fast on here, a fast forward, it was, you know, it goes okay. Now, I looked online, people saying this is quite slow for a reel-to-reel, -reel, this particular model, these models, 4000 series by Akai, doing a fast forward and rewind. They're quite slow compared with other like the, you know, the laborious and very, very slow. But uh, anyway, there's the fast forward, or forward fast, whatever you want to call it. So I'll stop it there and do the rewind. That's the rewind. Obviously not a lot of um, tape on this reel, so it's a bit quicker than probably what it would be if that was full up. But that gives you an idea of the fast forward and rewind. Now, I wanted to do some recordings. Um, I didn't know how to change the speed. I'm looking for a switch from three and, a, three, and three quarters to seven and a half. I'm, well, where's this switch? So if I just turn it off a second, I didn't know it's actually this, I don't even know the terms of these, so I think it's capstan or something, or pinch fold or whatever, this actually comes off, it's just here, 
this unscrews like that and you take this little bit off here this little bit and when you come to play it now it still plays but it plays at a slower speed now this is playing at three and three quarters so when you buy it if you're buying this particular model make sure this comes with it and this usually sits here it's an older for it just there hopefully you can see that it just sits there normally you screw it in position there so if you want to change it to seven and a half inches you can stop it turn it off because this roller continuously turns slide it back on and screw it back up so now you're back in action so like i say i know nothing about it really i had to clean all the heads up because the first recordings were pretty much diabolical to be honest with you a lot of cleaning involved really because these switches and people do mention it you know once they bought this brand new 40 odd years ago after a year or two these kind of get clogged up with dirt and you're wiggling them about trying to get some sound and obviously it's affecting the recording you've got to give these a clean as well because these affect it these all kind of linked up together and they kind of do affect you know, the performance of the machine got a few slight issues if i turn it on the dolby switch the bulb's got me in that but it's no big deal it, it, the dolby still works uh like i say i had to do a couple of little 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 minor repairs that some people may find a bit tricky but it's just replacing springs really you know if you get an idea of how it works maybe see a few videos online or got, got, got an idea of what you'll see which springs are doing what and how they're putting like these these wheels into different positions and if they're not there tight enough uh, they're not going to spin these main wheels etc so um, that's it the only thing I've got missing on here also is a little select knob here you can do it by hand this is just selects the tracks so I put it in the stereo so that's where it's going to stay so that, that's no big deal at all really yeah like I said I've got a video I, I think I put a link up I'll put it up again if, if, if I didn't put it up before showing you how I cleaned all this up and got it to where it is right so okay what what, what, what do I think of it like you know what, you know is, was it worth me getting it well for 50 quid yeah the answer's got to be yes isn't it? you know what i mean but so if you're you know if you're thinking of getting one and you're gonna pay 100 150 pound you know i'll go i'd say go around don't buy it online go around and listen to it and see how it sounds because you may have a lot of cleaning these heads obviously wear out uh stuff like that so you know bear that in mind it's an old machine how long will it last so don't go over the top you know what i mean as it has a surface etc because if you can't do this surface yourself you take it to a shop that still does it i mean the minimum they're going to charge is probably 100 quid something like that just to do a very basic service on your machine so now all of a sudden you doubled your outlay if you paid 100 pound for it and it may not still be a1 i don't think you're ever going to get these back to a1 as they were when they were brand new like sound wise etc because don't forget they are old and mechanical wise as well okay so let's just talk a few a few different bits first of all we'll talk about i bought a brand new tape which is fine that's the recording i've done the recording coming up is going to be on that brand new tape which is an emi obviously it's not top of the range i don't think anything like that but it's probably a mediocre tape so i think it will sound better with a better tape if i want to splash out a bit more money and buy myself a decent tape but is it going to be worth it i don't know um i bought some second hand tapes now on ebay these go i, th I thought i'd get some they go from about five to seven pounds something like that and my honest opinion is i've had three one I've slung in the bin, as you can see, is a picture of one of the tapes that are broken. These tapes can be any quality. They may say they've only been played or used once, but how do you know, like, you know what I mean? I bought I bought three, like I say, and they, they snap. Um, the sound quality, I think, you know, is not that great, especially this one here. I bought this little one here, just a five inch. It was only three, four quid, I think. I can't remember, about two quid postage. But the sound quality is half to what this is like. You know, it's so low the sound quality on it so it's obviously been used a lot of times or it's just a bad quality tape i don't know the only thing about buying second hand tapes is that if someone's recording something on it it's going to be something to listen to you may somebody come across a, a rare recording or something but uh, it's, it's pretty doubtful but you may do uh the ones i had had all opera on it you know, you know these old opera shows etc musicals or whatever it is but mainly opera um so yeah i'd say no for seven pound you're wasting seven pounds you must double it up and buy a brand new tape or even triple it up and get a brand new tape and you know you're going to get a decent quality hopefully don't forget these tapes are still old even the brand new ones are still old but um i think you've got more chance of uh, getting a decent quality one okay so um yeah what else have i got down here um yeah like i say replace a faulty spring and the screw was missing inside as well. I had to tell tell someone that this had already been taken apart because one of these screws here, I don't know if you can see them, but they've got a little washer on them. And one of the washers was missing off this front panel on one of the screws. So I knew some had already been in it because that, that washer wouldn't be missing otherwise. Uh, okay, so let's listen to that recording now anyway. <laughs>
okay, so that's the recording, you know, I don't know if it's come across there, but I think you can forget about the three and three quarters. You, you, that's a massive, massive difference in sound quality there. Uh, people do say you can get some good recordings like on that still, you know, some pre-recorded stuff, some stuff that still sounds okay with that. But um, before I go any further, just to let you know, that recording, no, I did that recording. Um, I had the... Um, I had the SOS, whatever that is, it's a some sound thing or something, I haven't really mucked about it too much. I had that on normal. Uh, I had it, it's got an equaliser here, so for the three and three quarter, sorry, the three and three quarter, obviously I had it put to three and three quarter, and for the seven and a half, I had it put to seven and a half. I had the tape uh, selector low noise off, and I put it to wide range. It gives more of a dynamic wide range, so I'm led to believe. And the Dolby I had off. I had the Dolby off on this for the recording and record and playback. So just to give you an idea, I actually set that up and uh, I try obviously kept the volume control, uh, the record level, should I say, exactly the same for uh, the slow speed and the faster speed on the tape recording there. So I just did it, you know, I had this particular machine set up. So how, you know, how was the recording? Now, first of all, these tapes and these old tapes, and you will read about it, you get slight little dropouts every now and again, you know what I mean? Only slightly, not all the time, but now and again, you're going to get a little slight dropout uh, when it just drops down a little bit like the level or etc or something or whatever but um yeah that 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 seven and a half that, that that recording there was obviously a lot better than the three and three quarters um it sounded okay you know what i mean it's, it's not obviously not cd quality you know i don't know if these these are you know capable of doing a near cd quality i i, I honestly don't know i mean some of the bigger decks the more expensive ones i should imagine are especially the ones that run in 15 inches per second obviously with the big reels the 10 inch reels they're probably you know capable of some good sound but they're going to cost you some money so if you're buying one of these, uh, don't forget the ears are 45 years old, you can clean them up as much as possible, but you're probably like at their limit for what they are now. So, you know, it's okay, it was okay, you know what I mean? It's still quite pleasurable, you know, not getting, you know, the, the extended eyes are not there, like, you know what I mean? They're, they're really, you, know, you, can, you can tell, like, it's not as bright as the CD recording, etc. You're not getting the, like, top, right top end. But other than that, it didn't sound too bad, you know what I mean? Putting them through the speakers and that, it's quite pleasurable, it's quite nice looking around, and you can see the two wheels spinning around as you're listening to your favourite tracks. Of course, this is going to be expensive. Um, you buy these these reels, seven and a half inches, they come in lengths. So um, a 1200 foot one, that gives you approximately 32 minutes worth of sound or recordings, and the 1800 foot one gives you approximately 48 minutes. So you can probably just about squeeze an album on there, maybe if you're recording an album off of uh, your record player, your vinyl, etc. You may want to put a little compilation together or something like that. Obviously, you can turn these, once you've done one side, you can flick the tapes over and do the other side. But that still limits you maybe to two albums for your maybe if you go and buy these say 15 or 20 pound brand new so that's you know it's going to limit you to that and uh, you obviously re-record over them but um, if you want to put a few together it's still going to start mounting up a little bit um yeah so you know all in all uh, you can buy pre-recorded stuff in here by the way um some of it can be expensive you know you know you don't know really the quality etc but you know your area of your reds this is another problem are they, are they aligned don't forget this is 50 years old it's been a few bangs knocks etc movement all that would adjust the edge very slightly so that pre-recorded cassette sorry that pre-recorded tape may not sound as good as it was you know it should do because your edges are not aligned so what i've done with this i haven't got a pre-recorded uh, tape uh, you can buy an alignment tape, you can feed a signal into here as well and you know, record it then play it back uh, through the playback head and adjust the azimuth and all that. But I've done it very crudely, the way I use is just you know, record something on here that I know where it sounds, a, a CD on here that I know where it sounds, uh, and, and done the tape monitor. So, um, so you know, that record and playback head aligned to each other. I left the, the record head as it was and just adjusted the playback head and to get you know, the nicest sound, the, the, the proper imaging as well. Uh, to match up, so that's how I did mine. I, I may do a video of that later on, just to you know, help people out. Maybe that you know, haven't got this test equipment, haven't got a signal generator, etc. Just do it by ear, and it's probably going to sound a lot better to what you when you actually bought the machine, you know, off of eBay, etc. And whatever. So you know, don't go mad. What I'd say is, if you're going to buy one of these, if you're going to buy this 400, these 400 series, this is don't forget, this was an entry level Akai machine years ago. Uh, these sold for, when they come out, I think, when, when was it, 75, something like that, sold for about 70 pounds, something like that, you know what I mean, they, they weren't, I suppose they were expensive in the time, you know, money compared to money, but um, so, you know, some amplifiers are a lot more expensive than that, even, even the Sansui, I think, amplifier, the 101 was about 60, 70 pounds, something like that, so kind of on par with that. There's a lot of work going on, a lot of mechanical parts, so things are going to wear out, 
and I think you're going to be a lot of time adjusting things and getting new springs and stuff like that. But I still think you're going to get a fair bit of entertainment out of it. You're going to have to clean the heads. They recommend every 20 or 30 hours, something like that of play, etc. So bear that all in mind. Don't spend too much, I don't think, on one of these. And don't expect too much. If you're expecting, like, say, CD quality sound, well, you're going to be disappointed. And uh, it's not for you. But if you just want to have a little muck about, you've got a real, a real in your house, something, you know, a bit nostalgic, analog sound, you know, it's going to be great. You know, I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm quite pleased I'll pay 50 quid. Like I say, I'll spend a little bit of pieces here and there. But, um, yeah, for that money, it's a still like, really. Like, you know, I mean, you know, go and get one if you can get one for that price and have a bit of fun with it because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a little bit of fun with it, I think. And uh, go from there. Like, later on, I may get a bit fed up with it and pass it on because I'm not going to go out and keep buying brand new tapes at 15 or 20 pound a pop kind of thing. But uh, for what it is at the moment, yeah, I think it's okay. Like I say, just don't expect top end you know, sound quality, etc. And then, you know, overall, you know, the overall sound sounded okay. Like, it's quite acceptable. The bass was quite good. Like I say, the mids were okay. The, it's just the, the top end. It just, you know, now and again, like, well, I'd say now and again, it, all the time, it's, it's missing that top end. Um, and you're going to get that little dropouts in the tape, you know what I mean? And not that if you've got, you know, if you buy a second-hand tape, you're going to have creases in it, etc. So stick to a new one. And I'll... I'll, I'll when I first used this, I'm going backwards and forwards and all that, and the mucking about and doing it all up. The very first tape, God knows how many times it come undone and everything, like, you know, I mean, it was hanging out here and all that. So you can, you know, maybe if you're going to get to know the machine, maybe that's the time to get a second hand tape. And, uh, and, and then once you've sussed it all out and you're not going to ruin a brand new tape, you know what I mean, then stick the brand new tape in. Because, you know, it's, it's amazing your fingers get in the way because you're not used to it and all that. Anyway, I think I've waffled on enough now. So and that's it. So, yeah, I recommend it. I won't pay no more than say 120 quid something like that for something like this and uh, not as you get a brand new one that's been in the box you know what I mean for 40 years or something uh, but don't forget there's a lot of rubber parts in here and saying but you're going to have new heads and etc so you may want to pay a little bit more for it than that but um, 120 pounds somewhere around there you're probably going to have a good bit of fun with it I think okay that's it so thanks for watching I'll see you all soon